It's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehome.com, where we provide tailor-made solutions for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies at home, and where we also provide tailor-made solutions for hospitals and intensive care units at home, whilst providing quality care for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies at home, otherwise medically complex adults and children at home, which includes home BiPAP, home CPAP, as well as home tracheostomy care for adults and children at home that are not ventilated. We also provide home TPN, home IV potassium infusions, home IV magnesium infusions, as well as home IV antibiotics. We also provide port management, central line management, peak line management, as well as Hickman's line management. And we also provide palliative care services at home. We're also sending our critical care nurses into the home for emergency department bypass services. We have done so successfully in the past for the Western Sydney Local Area Health District, their in touch program. So today I want to talk about, you know, what options there are for patients with hypoxic brain injuries in ICU, for example, that can't come off the ventilator successfully. So part of what we do with intensive care at home, we have a consulting and advocacy arm for families in intensive care. And you can find more information at intensivecarehotline.com. There we provide an in-depth professional consulting and advocacy service for families in intensive care. And we've been doing that from day one since we started intensive care at home. So out of that, there are families in intensive care, you know, that contact us right away when they have a loved one in intensive care and they're looking for options, you know, in case their loved ones can't come off the ventilator and so forth. So this week we were working with a client through our consulting advocacy at intensivecarehotline.com uh, who had their 36 year old brother and husband in ICU, still has in ICU, in a hospital in Australia, or in an ICU in Australia, to me, to be more precise. So patients not waking up initially had a GCS of three or four, a classical coma scale of three or four, um, was barely doing anything, looked like he was in a vegetative state even after um, sedation and opiates came off. But he was slowly but surely showing signs of getting more awake. He was showing signs of thrashing around, opening eyes, no, um, no purposeful movements just as yet, but definitely showing signs of getting more and more awake. And the question inevitably came up, you know, what is next for this gentleman? Should he be extubated and not be reintubated? Should it be a one-way extubation with a withdrawal of treatment? Could it be a tracheostomy in case he can't come off the ventilator? And there were, you know, plenty of discussions going on between ICU and the family. And we were guiding the family as their advocate saying, look, you know, if he needs a tracheostomy, then he can go home with intensive care at home. And the ICU was saying, well, he won't have any meaningful, quote unquote, meaningful recovery. He won't have any, quote unquote, quality of life. Well, I object to all of that because what is meaningful for an ICU team, uh, what is not meaningful for an ICU team may be very meaningful for the family and for the patient, right? Furthermore, um, you know, talking about quality of life, you know, what is what the ICU team perceives is a poor or no quality of life may not be the case. And maybe, you know, the family has a very different uh, perception of quality of life. They're very happy for their brother and husband to be alive and wanting to come home. So what we're finding with intensive care at home is, you know, hospitals have no idea about the NDIS and the support that can be offered through the NDIS in the community, the support that can be offered to empty ICU beds by taking patients home without killing people, right? That's the bottom line. What's the rush in ending someone's life? It's only been eight days in ICU. You know, some patients stay in ICU for eight weeks and they, and they improve. Right? You've got to give it some time. And once again, from a hospital perspective, they don't really know what supports are in the community. It's a very sort of um, brash approach to let someone be taken off the ventilator and potentially die. That is very inappropriate, especially if the family and the patient doesn't want it. There were also discussions around DNR or NFR, DNR, not for resuscitation. Um, and DNR do not resuscitate. And again, the family objects to that because they believe their loved one can improve. And no neurologist, no intensive care team can look into the future if you give people time. And a lot of people that have been given time have improved their situation to a point 
where the quality of life is acceptable and even desired from a patient and family point of view. And there is what patients and family perceive a meaningful recovery. So, you know, let's not have a debate about what is meaningful and let's just go with, with what is meaningful for patients and for families. And that's what we're here to do at Intensive Care at Home, making sure that the needs of patients and families are met, whether that's a clinical need or whether it's an emotional need. Furthermore, but we're also meeting the needs of intensive care units because we are helping them to free up ICU beds. We're helping them to cut the cost of ICU beds by around 50%. An ICU bed costs around five to $6,000 per bed day, whereas intensive care at home is around 50% of the cost, right? So once again, it is all about creating win-win situations, right? So I hope that gives you perspective. And, you know, if you're watching this and you're wondering what, what is the next step in a situation like that, well, the next step in a situation like that, if you are finding yourself in a situation like that, reach out to us here at Intensive Care at Home. You can, read, you can find us at intensivecarethome.com. You can call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website, or you can send us an email to info at intensivecarethome.com. You know, it's interesting that some ICUs in Australia are so antiquated, even though we've been around since 2013 and they still don't understand how critical care nurses in particular can help in the community by freeing up ICU beds. And, you know, even though we've been around in Australia since 2013, intensive care home services have been around since the early 2000s in Germany and in other European countries. So, you know, it's a no brainer to continue the intensive care treatment at home whenever appropriate to save money, improve quality of life, you know, improve meaning for patients and their families, empty ICU beds, cut the cost once again. It's a win-win altogether. So other steps that you need to take in a situation like that is obviously getting on the NDIS scheme if you're in Australia or talk to health insurances, which we can help you with. We've been involved in the advocacy for our families from day one successfully otherwise we wouldn't be in business right and we're also providing level two and level three ndis support coordination or we're also providing tac case management because that will help you in a situation like that to get the appropriate care and funding in the community for a situation like that right with intensive care at home currently we are operating all around australia in all major capital cities as well as in all regional and rural areas. We are NDIS approved in Australia, TAC and WorkSafe approved in Victoria, IKEA in New South Wales, NIISQ in Queensland, as well as the DBA all around the country. Our clients also receive funding through public hospitals, private health funds, as well as departments of health. We are the only provider in Australia in 2024 that has actually achieved third-party accreditation for intensive care at home nursing. No other provider has this much intellectual property or intensive care at home nursing accreditation than intensive care at home. We're employing hundreds of years of intensive care nursing experience combined in the community. Again, that is un unmatched from other providers in 2024 in Australia. Uh, we're also providing evidence-based services. If you look at the mechanical home ventilation guidelines on our website, they're evidence-based. They are a result of 25 years of intensive care at home nursing in Germany, as well as 12 years of intensive care at home nursing in Australia. And clearly the evidence-based mechanical home ventilation guidelines say that only critical care nurses with a minimum of two years critical care nursing experience can safely look after ventilated and or tracheostomy clients in the community. Anything else than that has killed people and will continue to kill people if a lower standard is being applied. And like I said, we're also providing level two and level three NDI support coordination. Our NDI support coordinator team, Amanda Riches, and her team have a wealth of knowledge. And I'll put a link towards um, this video uh, to an interview that I've done with Amanda. And if you're at home already and you realize that you're on a ventilator track, your SME BiPAP, CPAP, home TV, and whatever the case may be, and you realize your current setup is not working, you don't have the right team, you don't have the right skills, right? Um, and maybe you don't have the right NDS support coordinator as well. You know, you're going back to hospital all the time. You now realize that if you have support workers, for example, or even 
only general registered nurses that your life is at risk. Just this week, I had one of my business associates contact me and saying, hey, there was another patient in the community now who died on a ventilator with a tracheostomy because they didn't have ICU nurses. They had support workers and the support worker didn't know what to do in a medical emergency. This is at least the seventh or eighth patient in the community that has died because they didn't have ICU nurses while they were on ventilation or tracheostomy. The list is getting longer, but you know we can put a stop to it. That's what we've done with most of our other clients, you know. And um, just a word of warning, but also for you to know that we are the solution and we can help you with a higher level of care that you absolutely need when you're at home on a ventilator with the tracheostomy. Um, furthermore, we also provide TAC case management for TAC clients in Victoria. And um, if you're an NDI support coordinator watching this and you're looking for nursing care for your participants, please reach out to us as well. Or if you're looking for funding for more nursing care for your participants and you don't know how to go about it or what evidence to provide, I also encourage you to reach out to us. We can help you with the advocacy. And we also provide NDIS specialist nursing assessment assessments done by critical care nurses with a legal nurse consultant background. And if you are a critical care nurse and you're looking for a career change, we're currently offering jobs for critical care nurses in the home in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, in Albury, Wodonga. In Bendigo in Victoria, as well as in Warrigal in Victoria and in Geelong. If you have worked in critical care, nursing for a minimum of two years, pediatric ICU, ED, and you have already completed a postgraduate critical care qualification, we will be delighted to hear from you. Disclaimer, because we are offering a tailor-made solution for our clients, which includes regular staff, our clients will have the same staff coming over and over again because they are very, very vulnerable. It's all about building the critical relationships with our clients and with our team members and having regular and stable teams. That also means if you're looking for agency work where you can come and go, this probably isn't the right fit for you on a long-term basis because our clients want the same stuff over and over again because they want to build the relationships with you and with us and we want to build a relationship with you as well, of course, so that it remains a win-win situation for everyone. And if you are an intensive care specialist or ED specialist, we also want to hear from you. We are currently expanding our medical team as well. We can also help you to eliminate your bed blocks in ICU and in the, for your long-term patients or for your regular readmitting patients. We're here to help you to take the pressure off your ICUs and ED beds. And in most cases, you won't even pay for it. Our latest numbers have shown that we cut the cost of an ICU bed by 50%. And with ED admissions, our research has shown we're saving around $2,000 for an ED admission, not mentioning the ED bed that you have empty in the meantime while we're dealing with the situation at home. And if you're a hospital executive watching this and you have bed blocks in your ICU, ED and respiratory wards, please reach out to us as well. Lastly, if you're in the US or in the UK and you're watching this and you need help, we want to hear from you as well. We can help you there privately. Once again, contact us at intensivecarethome.com. Call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website or send us an email to info at intensivecarethome.com. And if you like my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families with intensive care at home and intensive care. Click the like button, click the notification bell, share this video with your friends and families and comment below what you want to see next, what questions and insights you have from this video. I also do a weekly YouTube live where I answer your questions live on a show and you will get notification for the YouTube Live, if you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel or if you are a subscriber to our email news at intensivecarethome.com. Thank you so much for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarethome.com and I will talk to you in a few days. Take care for now.